Well, I think Bo just got a message. We just got a letter. I wonder who it's from. Is that a Blue's Clues thing? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was, yeah. Well, I thought I recognized that. That's 100% of Blue's Clues I thing. thought I recognized that. I. Because the only other thing I remember from that show is the mail Shit. call. You know, do you know that, Bo? The mail what? thing from Blue's Clues? Do you remember that? Mail, uh, mail call? Here's the mail. It never fails. Uh-oh. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to will. Mail! I watched that show a lot as a little kid. Obviously. I watched it last week. Access Sports Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Access Sports Weekly here on AccessWDUN.com. Bo Wilson, beside Caleb Hutchins. There you go. You got the name right. And the guy that just spoke out of turn, he's, he's Seth got, Chapman. Yeah, out of turn. He's still got one more to go. <laughs> out of turn. Welcome, don't, gentlemen. Don't I speak whenever I want to, Bo. I speak now. <laughs> so how you doing? Good. Why did you turn good. your mic off? Because I, did, I didn't expect you to ask me another question right uh, off the bat. We've got questions today. About what? What's you, your questions? How you doing? Pretty good. Good. How you doing, Caleb? Doing good. How was everybody's Thanksgiving, by the way? Oh, yeah. Good, Anybody eat too much? Oh, Everybody absolutely. ate too much. No. Can you eat too much on Thanksgiving? Yes, Is that can. an actual thing? Yes, you can. Easily. How many houses did we all go to? How many different Thanksgivings did we all have? I had two. Well, I kind of two, but mainly just one. The other one, um, we had some family members that had uh, COVID, so uh, we went and ate at uh, Loretta's. For lunch, mm. pretty good. I thought Loretta's. Loretta's is always good. It's all good at Loretta's it's Country all Kitchen. All good. They are a sponsor, by the way, of WDUN. Thank you, Loretta's, for the sponsor and for the good food. And we would take a sponsorship for this show. Yeah, that's true. If you want yeah. to sponsor Access Sports Weekly, uh, hit us up. Yeah, no doubt, because we like your food. So, what was your favorite dish? What what a bargain for a sponsorship! <laughs> Hit us up because we love your food. Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's great. it's great. That's the best pitch I got. So, <laughs> so speaking of food, what was your favorite dish? Now, I know we've said last week, you know, Caleb's dressing, mine was dressing. What was yours? Brooke makes a chicken casserole for all of like our you know holiday stuff. She mm-hmm. always makes a chicken casserole that is just my favorite thing. It's like uh, stuffing on the bottom shredded chicken, and then some cream of chicken soup and something mixture kind of on the top and then bakes it all. So good. Is it a mixture of, like, uh, potato chips and breadcrumbs? No. Uh, occasionally, yes. She will throw, like, uh, she'll throw Ritz crackers in the mix to yeah. kind of thicken up the stuffing. It's really good. Super good. So sounds, that, sounds pretty good. Sounds really good. I'll have to get her to make some. So when here. you say stuffing, yeah, I'm sure that's going to happen at yeah. some point. <laughs> let's let's make that happen on. I mean, uh, I I can make it happen. She oh, loves cooking it. Yes. Okay. She loves cooking. So you said stuffing. Yes. What what uh, what's in the stuffing that's on the bottom? I mean, stuffing. What's? I don't think I've ever had stuffing. I don't think I ever had I ever have either. I've always just had dressing. Dressing. dressing yeah. They're basically the same thing. No, 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 no. I've been told that they're not. I've always been under the assumption that they're pretty much the same thing. Comment below this video, is dressing uh, the same thing as stuffing? We'll we'll find out by next week's show. Yeah. We could Google it, though. We could Google it. That's true, but see, that would break up the pace of the show. Yeah, which is just we're flowing, already going pretty well right so now. Smoothly. It is flowing so smoothly. So, bottom line, everybody ate too much on Thanksgiving. Oh, yep. yeah. And all the food was fantastic. Oh, yes. Might just have to put a, like a little annotation at the beginning of the video. Skip to this part to hear the guys actually talk about sports. <laughs> yeah, it's like skip to <laughs> skip to four minutes in and then we yeah. actually talk about sports. So since we're supposed to be talking about sports, not only did we have fantastic meals on Thursday of last week, but then we had some awesome games on Friday after Thanksgiving and a lot of big time scores coming in in the first round of the state playoffs. Yeah, and uh, by the way, Saturday as well, because yeah, of Saturday 2A and well. 4A You're getting right. moved to Saturday. But yeah, um, a lot of stuff uh, w- was interesting. I I was impressed um, you know, with, with North Hall's defense, uh, because I know they end up giving up 28 points to North Murray, but they the first half they had North Murray's offense on lockdown. Let them build that big early lead. Um, got a little dramatic there towards the end of the game, but, but they were able to hold on. I was pretty impressed with them. 
Um, speaking of defenses, again, I was impressed with Gainesville's defense. Mm-hmm. They they lose at the in the last minute to Archer, um, but they gave up 21 points on the night. Had Archer shut out in the first half. Um, you know, I had said previously I thought Gainesville's defense and the way they were playing was going to give them a shot in that game. That was exactly what happened. Um, and I think that Gainesville Gainesville's program's headed in the right direction. If they can find a little more offensive consistency. Uh, they're 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 going to be ready to make some real runs there in seven A. Yeah, a uh, kind of a fingertip away after seeing that picture that uh, yeah. Dan Kiley posted of uh, of that last touchdown for Archer. So uh, you know it's 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 what we thought Gainesville would do defensively, but I think Gainesville made more of a statement by saying, "Hey, we are here in Class Seven A and we can compete." Yeah, no, I I think they did too, and I think they did that all year long. Yeah. When you look at the fact that you know Archer. Um, you know, West Forsyth, who's in the second round of the playoffs right now, still playing at home. Um, you know, their game against Hillgrove earlier in the year, they played a number of 7A teams and really outplayed them for large stretches. And, and we're talking teams that are, are regulars in the 7A playoffs and regulars in the later rounds of the 7A playoffs. So, yeah, I think Gainesville has absolutely proven that they're ready for the stage and uh, it should be exciting to see what they've got coming up the next couple of years. So, Bluff uh, winning, winners in the first round, a big win for them. They started out, started out kind of slow, but they finished really strong in that game. Well, we, how many times have we seen Cherokee Bluff do that this yep. year? It's happened time and time again. I think there were a lot of people who thought, uh, you know, oh, is, is, is Cherokee Bluff you know about to fall apart here because they were down 7 nothing late in the first half, but... They've done that three or four different times this year and came out in the second half. Defense just absolutely locked down. And once their offense found its rhythm, uh, it didn't lose it. It, was, it happened to them against North Hall. They were down early in the third quarter against North Hall. Defense settles in, put a couple of good drives together and just, you know, end up winning by 17 points. In this case, they just ran Lafayette out of the building in the second half. Um, they did that to West Hall earlier in the year. They did that to Gilmer mm-hmm. earlier in the year in very similar situations. They were only up on Lumpkin County, thirteen to nothing at halftime. Ended up winning that game big. So we've seen Cherokee Bluff do that several times, uh, but uh, but doing it in the playoffs uh, obviously means more because it uh, means your season's still alive. Well, uh, other big winners: Jefferson, a huge winner, sixty-five yeah. nothing in the first round. Branch, forty to seven, a big win there for them. Dawson put up forty-five points uh, against a Daresville in the first round. Commerce, big winners over Manchester. Just, uh, uh, did you expect such a large offensive output in the first round? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's not unlike the scores that we've really been seeing all year long. Uh, you're not really going to get your major defensive slugfest in the playoffs until, um, at least over the last few years, when you look at it, until you get into the later rounds. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when you're going to see. That's when you're going to see because there's a there's more great offenses in Georgia right now than there are great defenses. That's just the way it is across high school football. So until you have two of those great defenses come up head to head against each other, you're going to see some big offensive numbers on the board. And 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 yeah, Dawson County. Why? By the way, just region seven three A as a whole, I thought was very impressive. I mean, when your only loss is the number four seed who lost by 13 to Rockmart. It was a pretty good day for Region 7-3A. Uh, but, yeah, Dawson County putting up big numbers. Uh, Buford obviously just continuing to roll. Um, and then what Jefferson did, just capping it off on Saturday. Uh, wow. Uh, that was, that's about all you can say about 65 to nothing. Yeah, and most of those points scored in the first half. Jefferson had the game well under wraps. Uh, by halftime in that one. But speaking of defenses, uh, coming up in the second round, we're going to see a pretty good defense down at Marist. Yeah. And an ever-improving Flowery Branch defense and a massively improved Flowery Branch offense. Yeah, Flowery Branch has only been shut out twice in the Ben Hall era since he got there in 2017. Both times it was against Marist. Uh, And it was over the last two years. But this offense that they have this year, as you mentioned, is a much improved offense over what they had when they played Maris last year, and I would even say versus what they had in 2018. And remember, uh, back in 2018, Flowery Branch had a pretty good offense, but Elijah Ganey had gotten hurt the week before against Blessed Trinity. David Renard, who was then a freshman, had to go and play against Marist that next week, and they committed some turnovers, uh, and the game got away from them in the second half. David Renard's a very different quarterback now than he was in 2018. 
Yeah, and, and even in 2019, I would say in the entire area, there's probably no one individual player who's more improved from last year to this year than David Renard. Well, let's go back to that that 2018 and 2019. Now, Flowery Branch's schedule was BT and Maris back to back, right? And so 2018, Ganey was bummed up in in that game, and, and as you said, that's when David Bernard got his first taste of varsity action. Last year's game, real, real, real. in the fire, yeah, of in the, the fire, yeah, yeah. yeah, not not clean up. No, beauty, no, but, this yeah, was yeah. real action, uh, you know. And then the second game last year, it was kind of a slow start uh, for Marist offense. You know, it was and Branch just couldn't get anything going. I think it was 193 total yards for Branch. It was seven to zero late in the first half. And Mayor scored back to back touchdowns with a minute to go. One yeah, they, of them was they off a turnover. A, they scored a touchdown yep. and then Flowery Branch fumbles on yep. the next drive. That's the stuff so. that Flowery Branch has to keep from happening. If if Flowery Branch that you, you you can't commit the turnovers against this Maris team. They they're they're just too good. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ben Hall will be the first one to tell you that. I'm sure he'll tell you that when you talk to him later in the week. Um, they 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 cannot have that stuff like they had at the end of the first half against them last year. Uh, you've got to keep Maris offense from having great field position. You've got to keep them from getting two for ones, uh, stuff like that. But but as we mentioned, this is probably the best flowery branch offense that they've had out of these matchups with Marist. But Marist defense might be the best they've been in that stretch too. I think there's only been there's only been one game this year where Marist even allowed a touchdown on the board. Yeah, they're they're giving up an average of three points per game this yeah, season. I mean, so that's, it's it's, it's about as good the, as it gets. It's the number two offense versus the number one defense in Class Four A. That's the way it's going to go down on Friday. It's it's interesting. Uh, you know, to to see how much Flowery Branch's offense has really came uh, along this year and, and improved so much. And on the flip side of that, Caleb, they started out very young on defense. They were giving up close to 30-plus points per game. Last six games, they've dropped that down to 17 points per game. So you can see the vast improvement on the defense side of the ball. So I think this game is going to be a very good ball game. I also think that Branch has a very good shot at winning this game against the number one team in Class 4A. Well, and Marist is is built similarly to Jefferson mm-hmm. uh, in that they're a triple option team yep. I, in terms of the system that they run. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're a triple option team. And Flowery Branch's defense, you talked about that young defense, they've taken some licks against triple option this year, but they've seen it twice, and they've seen two of about the best triple option teams you can see yep. in Georgia in St. Pius and Jefferson now they get Marist, who's obviously going to be great at it again. But I really thought in that Jefferson game, Bo, that Flowery Branch's defense did a, a better job, even though they ended up giving up more points than they gave up against St. Pius. Remember, Jefferson had a blocked field goal return for a touchdown, and that game also got away in the second half. But uh, when the game was still in the balance, Flowery Branch, I thought, was making Jefferson earn their yardage in a way that they weren't really doing against St. Pius, where St. Pius was just kind of gashing them you know, left and right. Um, so if Flowery Branch's defense can improve from the Jefferson game to Friday night, we we might see a, a defense that's ready to tangle with Marist here. But uh, you can't get a tougher draw than what they than no. the number one team in the state. I mean, it's the toughest possible opponent you could play at this juncture of the season, just from a ranking standpoint and all of that. Uh, but I do think the way Flowery Branch is playing right now that they're ready for it. They do have an offense this year. No, oh, absolutely, no so. question, no question. A, a balanced. They, yeah, potent they, offense. They had offense at times last year, but they didn't have the balance that right. they have now. I think that's what's been the difference for them this year. All right, so you've got Bluff hosting Carver Atlanta. That's an interesting game, also a game that I believe the Bears could win. Yeah, I think if there's any game in our area that's a toss-up, I think it's this one, or at least the closest thing to a toss-up in the area this week. It is the Cherokee Bluff Carver Atlanta game. Uh, Carver. We know it's good, uh, but Carver was very young to start the year. They took they took some. I think they started actually started zero and four, but then the Cedar Grove game got flipped to a win because Cedar Grove had played an ineligible player. Uh, but Carver, they I think they've won in terms of just outright wins. They've won three out of their last four. Um, they beat a good Hart County team in the first round of the playoffs. We know Carver's going to have athletes. They were young to start the year. They look like they're playing better now against the Cherokee Bluff team that. Got the bad taste of the White County game out of their mouth. Played with a lot of confidence in that second half of the first round playoff game. They're back at home this week. Can they keep that momentum that they found in that second half rolling right on into the Carver game? Um, I would love to see Cherokee Bluff come hot out of the gate and just and just 
you know, punch Carver right in the mouth right out of right out of the starting gates. Yep. Um I think I think they can do it um because of of you know the way they're playing right now. And how many times do we see it in sports bow that you get a team um take a loss and then they come out to start the next game not quite, you know, clicking on all cylinders, but then they get the moment, they get that game turned around and then that turns into a two or three game spurt of great play. Um I'd like to see that out of Cherokee Bluff this week. Well, we uh, hopefully we'll see that out of Cherokee Bluff. And, and, you know, Carver Atlanta played Buford early in the season, got to see him play. It was still early, though. So it was hard right. to tell what Carver had because Buford's defense was was just stopping him. Well, it was Buford's so. defense. And also remember that those Atlanta public schools were among had among the strictest restrictions mm-hmm. in the state of Georgia in terms of when they could finally get back onto the field and start working. So when Carver Atlanta took the field in September, Buford had a good head start on yep. them uh, in terms of getting back to, to football work um, during the summer when, when everything was shut down because of COVID. So Carver Atlanta had to work through really that first month as well. Um, but they are playing well right now. You're, you're, you're not catching them at the right time. No. We'll put it that way. No. All right, so other games in the area that we will track. North Hall at GAC, Dawson at Oconee County, Model at Rabin, Gordon Lee at Commerce, Buford's hosting Cambridge, and Jefferson hosts Hapeville Charter in the second round of the playoffs. Now, let's uh, let's roll on into the show. A little different segment this week uh, with Seth's picks. And we're going to let Seth set this up. All right, so on this time, Seth's picks is going to be just a little bit different. I've got the picks from our sets of highlights, we visited Cherokee Bluff and North Hall this week. Got both those games on our highlight reels. And I've picked a couple plays that, once again, that I just find cool. It's not necessarily the biggest game-changing plays. Just stuff that I find really cool. I'm going to watch my picks with Caleb and Bo, and we all get to comment on them. Yeah, because we normally we normally we don't actually get to see no. these. So we just say, hey, great job, Seth. But yeah, they just actually... fake it. Thanks for thanks for ruining the movie magic, Caleb. Now we've got Nobody tech... knew that we were faking it. Now we've got the tech. <laughs> well, you know, that's we're great actors, though. So. Yeah. Now we've got the technology. We can actually see it. Yeah, it's the technology is a flash drive a in a flash... computer screen, yeah, it's FYI. Just, it's the same computer screen that's been there all we year have long. finally come into the 20th century okay so here's our here is the 21st start century i know we have thumb drives in the 20th century <laughs> <laughs> we start <laughs> and computer screen we start with cherokee bluff we start with cherokee bluff and a great touchdown run from Jaquan Smith. Yeah, Jaquan, he's gonna he he's gotta start getting some big time offers. That yes. run right there is probably yeah. the most impressive one I've seen out of him all year. Just breaking tackles left and right. And our next clip is gonna be another from another usual suspect, okay, okay. Shaw Dabney. Pause that for just a second. So Sh- Sebastian Irons, first year at Bluff, he has really improved as the season's gone on. Yeah, no, no question. At the beginning of the year, Cherokee Bluff was pretty strictly a ground and pound team. Although that also might have been a product of the fact that you know they they were playing opposition that they were better than for yeah. most of the year, so they felt like they could just lean on their ground game. But no, as the season's gone on, he's gotten better and better. Uh, I thought he was really the key in that win over mm-hmm. North Hall and and some of the third downs he was able to convert. Uh, but yeah, he he's getting better every week. Of course, you've got uh, Kansas commit Shad Dabney there hauling in that pass. A yeah, shot. As I, said, as I said, another usual suspect yeah. from Bluff. No doubt. There we go. What a great catch there. Next up, great defensive play by Bluff. Great yeah. defensive play. Deacon again. Phillips there on the uh, the big hit. Moving on to North Hall. This this play here, that's the muff punt. Now this was the the start of just a wild first quarter for North Hall. You know, well, the was it, was onside, he... not onside kick that they recovered, and then the muff punt in that same quarter. That happened in North Hall just jumping out to a twenty-one nothing lead. North Hall could not have played any better through the first fourteen minutes no. than they did Friday night. Next clip from North Hall, another big hit for an incomplete pass. Yeah, that's AJ Jones coming up, the freshman. He uh, he had some big hits uh, in that game Friday. Uh, again, their defense I thought was the most impressive yeah. thing about that performance because North Murray was an offense that was averaging about forty points a game, and through it looked like looked like North Hall was going to have them shut out in the first half, and they probably should have. Touchdown call at the end of the half, yeah. maybe a little yeah. questionable, but <laughs> bounced in there. Yeah, but uh, but no, North Hall's defense I thought uh, was was lights out in that first and, half. And North Hall's defense in the secondary, and I know Coach Bishop said before that game earlier in the week that he was a little concerned about the double moves that North Murray's receivers could make, and they had some pretty decent receivers. Uh, but I thought their defense kept 
you know, their receivers in front of them, and then they made the play. Yeah. So it wasn't not like they were shutting them down, but they were not letting them get extra yards, and that was after the catch, and that, that was that was huge. And last but certainly not least, we have Clark Howell in the one that started it all. You know, he should just wear a suit and tie because it's just another day at the office for him. 233 yards rushing. I mean, the kid is just also, explosive Also, he could have worn a suit and tie on that play because nobody touched him. <laughs> that he the guy go. out of his shoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so anytime you've got Clark Howell, and of course, as I've been calling him the wingman, Brad Purrier and, and Kevin Rochester, uh, that's a triple-headed monster. And hopefully they can make some noise this week at GAC. How good has Clark Howell been this year, by the way? Uh, he's just he's been that guy that we kind of expected he was going to be that guy because he was kind of the only one returning that had major varsity experience. But I mean, he's leading. I think he's still leading the state or Class Three A at rushing. Yeah, I think uh, he is leading Class Three A. He's probably the best offensive player that we've talked the least about yes. in the area so far this year. Um, because it just he makes it look look routine. Oh, he the, the does. games that he has, but he had over. I mean, to have over two hundred yards and uh, was it two or three touchdowns he ended I think with? Yeah, I think he had two touchdowns. Yeah, two touchdowns and over two hundred yards in a playoff game. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. But if you go back and you look at you know every story that we've written on North Hall of the football season, it's Clark Howell, one hundred and fifty yards. Clark Howell, one hundred ninety seven yards. Clark Howell, two hundred two yards. You know, and just the way this offense has has really come together uh, and improved, it, you know, it's a true testament to what the coaching staff has done. But the biggest key about North Hall is you can always expect them to be fundamentally sound. Well, and, and this is a young By the North way, Hall that's team. The end of Seth's picks. Oh, good, yes. good work, Seth. By the good way, work, Seth. Good you can, work. Uh, you know, North Hall was a young team. We knew that coming into the year. Um, a lot of times with a younger team. You need that one veteran guy to be the leader, even though your best seasons are probably to come. Yep. You, if you're gonna, you, you need an older guy who's not going to be around for those future years to kind of set the standard or to kind of be the 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 bell cow for that group. And that's what Clark Howell's done for North Hall. Really, when you look at North Hall, and, and there are some other seniors that they'll lose. He's obviously not the only one, but in terms of key people, they'll have to replace going into 2021. Clark Howell is 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 absolutely the biggest one, but North Hall will be back next year because they've got a lot coming oh, yeah. back. Oh yeah, they will be back. There's no doubt. So, um, you know, we discussed in the sports office the team of the week, the and, Will Hart team of the week. Yeah, well, I've not announced it yet, there, big voice guy. But sure, um, <laughs> it is. It is. Well, just take that logo down. We'll bring it back up yeah, in a second. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we discussed it. It's kind of a unanimous decision, but. As everyone loves it, it is now time to officially announce Will Hart Team of the Week. And we bring the logo back. There it is. So, uh, Caleb, you want to do the honors? Uh, I I think I was the one who started this. Uh, this I think it is going to be unanimous. I think it was me who brought it up. I, I am voting Jefferson. Yes. Uh, 65 to nothing, and I will end my argument there. Yeah. Same. That's, that's my case. <laughs> Ditto. Same. Jefferson it does, doesn't get more impressive no, than that. No, it does not. Jefferson, congratulations. You are this week's Will Hart Team of the Week. And that means that is a wrap for today's show. Again, as usual, all the information is running below us right now. Well, oh, yeah. in between us. In between us. Somewhere on the bottom of the screen. It yeah. comes in one side of the screen and out the other. Also, guys, my email is going to be at the bottom of the screen. I'm highly encouraging. Send us your clips. You know, my picks, everything that we get, it's just what we're able to go out and get. Because, you know, we are just people. We have only a few of us. Mm -hmm. If you got a clip, cell phone footage, camera, anything that you got and you want to send us some of your clips, they might make it into sets picks. They might make a highlight reel. They might make a recap this week. Please send them, Google Drive, whatever you want, to the email that I'll put somewhere, everywhere around me. So what is that email, Seth? And how do you want them to video? Horizontally. I'll take vertical <laughs> yeah, that's, if that's what I'll take vertical right, if that's what right. you got, but I prefer horizontal. That email is Seth.chapman at Jacobsmedia That's a great point, people. If you're gonna send us stuff uh, it's not just for Instagram, so it, we need it horizontally, yes. not vertically. And we can use it on Instagram. What is what as is well. that what is that email, Seth? 
Seth.chapman at jacobsmedia.net. Okay, just trying to help folks out. It's rolling on the screen. Well, yeah. I know it's on the screen, but there's I'm literally going to put it everywhere. It's but there rolling. are some people who, you know, they like, might not be able to see as well as some other people. I mean, you could just, just to help like, go out. to a black screen now with your email address on it. I will. And see, now they can't see us at all. Seth.chapman at jacobsmedia.net. That's yeah, right. and that's also running at the bottom of the screen, or maybe on our faces, I don't know. Somewhere. All right, so, folks, that's a wrap for the show. For uh, Caleb and Seth and Bo, enjoy... Round number two of the GHSA State Playoffs.